Hey everybody, Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today is a bit of a different video. It's not a product review, it's a response to a call out and it's a friendly call out. Kevin Mall at Skylabs Vintage Audio in Des Moines, Iowa put out a hi-fi tag call out to creators to create a hi-fi tag similar to what they do in the vinyl community with what's called a vinyl tag where creators come on and they talk about general topics, not maybe any specific records or anything like that, or maybe about what record was very influential for them. So Kevin had 11 questions and I'm gonna use those same 11 questions and we'll go through them and hopefully we'll have some fun. And if you do, I would very much appreciate a like and a subscribe from you. And if you feel motivated to, you can support the channel. There is a membership link in the pinned comment and in the video description. And if you really want to, there is a thank you button at the bottom of the video. I appreciate it in advance. So let's go ahead and start with the questions. Question number one, name the first piece of gear that led you down the hi-fi rabbit hole. Well, that's really, really simple. It was uh, a present, Christmas, birthday, something in either 1972 or 1973. And it was an RCA, uh, a track player, kind of similar to the one you see here, not the same. The one I had had an AM FM uh, stereo radio in it as well. This one doesn't, but, and that was the key thing was the radio. So it was an all in one little cheap speakers and so forth, but it had the radio And here in Chicago. We had a radio station <clears throat> called WKQX. And for the first year it was broadcasting, it was commercial free for the full year. And everybody went crazy for that. And then they did a really fun thing on Friday nights or Saturday nights, I don't remember which, they used to have what they called the concert at Fantasy Park. And it was regular just album music, but someone would then overlay crowd sounds and applause and things like that. And it was wonderful and we all loved it. And we were all glued to our radios, but probably the most influential radio show for me and my journey in music was on WFMT, our famous classical radio station here, after midnight on Friday night or Saturday night, they had a radio show hosted by Mr. A, your entertainer, and it was blues. And it was Chicago blues and Delta blues and Kansas City blues, and it was amazing. Muddy Water, John Lee Hooker, you know, all those great guys, Howlin' Wolf. And I can't express enough how influential that radio show was for me in my musical experience because I was getting exposed to music that I would not normally ever hear. And it was wonderful. I'd stay up all, you know, till that show went off the air listening to that and making notes about what records and what things I wanted to listen to, you know, go to the record store and buy. And it was so influential for me. So that was Mr. A, your entertainer here in Chicago. <clears throat> so question number two, name the favorite piece of hi-fi equipment you currently own. That's a tough one. I've got a couple that I really like. Um, and one of the nice things too, doing the reviews is I always have something new coming in, but I think my go-to uh, day in and day out is my Cambridge Evo 150. I really love that thing. It gives me everything I want. It is immensely uh, uh, excellent sound quality, great imaging, wonderful features, very powerful. Um, I really like that. I would also put a little asterisk and say, plus the Cambridge AXR 100, which I listen to every day for many years. I do love that piece, but the Evo 150 is a great one. And it's my go-to reference. So now, number three, name the product you bought that you regretted. That's really easy. It was a turntable called Versa Dynamics, and it was a pain in the butt. It was, it had a suction platter. It had an air bearing linear tracking tone arm, and the pumps would fail and it would leak and everything would just break and go to hell in a handbasket. Um, I got so fed up with it, I literally threw it away and it felt good to throw it away. Question number four, if you could only use one song to demo a stereo system, what would it be? That's a tough one. Thanks, Kevin. Um, <clears throat> I would say that one artist in particular that I've been listening to for 30 years or so, um, and a lot of his music is really good for, in my mind, for evaluating, is named David Arkenstone. And David is kind of a new age, Celtic new age uh, artist, but his his Music is very cinematic and some of it is huge sweeping pieces and orchestral, but some of it's also too really just kind of interesting acoustic sort of, like I said, Celtic music. He's a great guitarist. He's a great musician. Um, and his songs, even though I know the imaging is manufactured in the, in the studio, they image beautifully. There's some wonderful stuff to listen to. But one song in particular is Wings of the Shadow off an album called Quest of the Dream Warrior. And I'll put a link to it for Tidal Kobos and Spotify in the video description. It's a great track. It has everything. Great bass, great imaging, great mids, great high frequencies. I can listen to that and make some value judgments on equipment really simply. So that's a great one for me. Question number five. 
If money were no issue, what is your perfect system? This one's tough because again, with all the new stuff I've got coming in, there's so many new things that it really scratches that itch for me of, do you want something new? What's kind of interesting and cool. And I would say, I think, honestly, I'm very fortunate in that I'm, I think I'm there already. Um, and it would be my Cambridge Evo 150. It would be my Wharfdale Diamond 12.4 tower speakers. I love those things. Um, surprisingly, and I bet most people would think I would say my shit Bifrost multi-bit uh, DAC, but, and that is a wonderful piece and it is gonna be in the system for the rest of my life. But lately it's been the Gishelli J2S socketed DAC with the AKM4499 chipset in it. It's just marvelous. Um, and of course I'm feeding that from Artivana, which is one of the most important parts of my of any of my systems or any of the systems I'm reviewing is Artivana because it gives me bit perfect playback. It gives me all my files that I have on hard drive. It gives me all of my streaming content. Um, and it is just wonderful. So Evo 150, Diamond 12.4s, Shelly J2S socketed uh, DAC and Artivana. That would be my perfect system. And I think I'm already there. So I'm very, very fortunate. If I had to choose one music format, what would it be? Um, probably speed polka. Yeah. Polka music does it for me. I'm only kidding. That's a tough one. The, the genre that I thought of that really kind of can encompass everything that I listen to is jazz. And it's a very broad definition of jazz. So it could be a very closely mic'd, beautiful acoustic combo, you know, a trio or a quartet playing jazz, traditional jazz. It could be wild, crazy, funk-inspired, electronic jazz, like Miles Davis, kind of, uh, Miles Davis um, Bitches Brew. Um, it could be avant-garde jazz. It could be smooth jazz, like David Benoit or uh, Rick Braun or something like that. So jazz is one genre, in, in that definition of mine, that's broad enough that I know I could be satisfied with it probably forever. But I would be hungry for new stuff all the time. Now, number seven, what stereo product that people love that, that you just don't understand? I'm so sorry, everybody. I just don't get Klipsch Heritage speakers at all. I really don't. And I'm so sorry. I know people love them and that's fine. If you love them, that's all that matters. What I think doesn't matter. But I grew up with K-Horns and I, I honestly, I can't listen to a Klipsch speaker anymore. Not any of them, but especially the Heritage. So... My apologies to those Heritage fans. That's just my opinion. So question number eight, what is your next upgrade? Well, again, because I have so much stuff coming in for review, I'm always scratching that itch with new gear. You know, I've got an advanced Paris XI-75 integrated in. I've got a Cord Cutis deck in. I've got a Pontus here. I've got all kinds of stuff coming in. Vintage gear, um, a vintage Harman Kardon stack, a vintage Technique stack. I just reviewed a vintage Adcom stack. So I get, and I've got one of Thomas and Stereo's Galleon amps here. So that itch gets scratched for me. But one piece came in that really kind of has grabbed my attention, and it is a Sparkos Gemini headphone amp. And it's a balanced headphone amp, but it can also act as a single-ended preamp. So it's got an in and an out and a volume control, but it's got it, it's got tubes in it or a tube in it. And Andrew Sparks was kind enough to send me some tubes. So I've been rolling tubes and I've got a 12 BH7 in there right now. And I love the way it sounds, not only as a preamp, but as a balanced headphone amp on my Sennheiser Drop 6XXs. So that's an interesting piece. And it's kind of got me back into headphones. And that's really not a normal part of my listening uh, routine headphones, but it's becoming more and more engaging for me with that particular piece. So that was that. Number nine, a piece of equipment that you kept in your system for looks alone. Well, for years it was my Kenwood cassette deck. And if you watch my cassette video, you'll see it's in there, I featured it. And it had the segmented LED bouncing meters. And that was a lot of fun. And of course we listened to a lot of tapes in those days. But currently right now, and it's not in just for looks, it's in because it's amazing. It's my Cambridge Evo 150 because it's got fake VU meters. And who doesn't love fake VU meters, right? You gotta. So it would be that piece. So number 10, the last piece of equipment that made you want to re-listen to your entire music collection. And this one is tough. Again, I've got some cool stuff in here. Um, you know, a variety of DACs, a variety of amps, a variety of streamers, all those things. But the one thing that has been kind of hooked me for the last couple of weeks since, it, since I bought it 
is the Gishelli J2S, the socketed AKM4499 unit. And right now I'm running it with a Sparkos 2509, the big jumbo Sparkos 2509 on single ended, which is how I listen to it most of the time. And then I've got the stock TI OPA 1656s on the balanced, or I can roll in the Sparkos 3602s. On, on balanced as well, but mostly it's the single ended. And the sound of that has been so engaging that uh, on several nights when I'm not doing reviews and I'm just, I'm taking my reviewer hat off, I dove into my collection, my hard drive with, you know, 5,500 albums on it, over 500 SACD rips, my playlists on Spotify, Tidal and Cobas, primarily Tidal and Cobas through Artivana and going deep and really chasing some stuff down the rabbit hole that J2S has just made it so much fun to do. So that's the one piece lately that's had me really, really engaged. And then number 11, last question, what is an accessory that has come out recently that you can't imagine living without? Well, there aren't really any, I mean, obviously the streamers are more recent and in, in that regard for recent, it would be my Cambridge MXN10. Um, that's an amazing piece as a streamer, and I use it as a source for almost every one of my reviews, just as a digital transport. But the one in it, they've been out forever. The one I find myself really kind of, you know, I rely on quite a bit for personal listening is my Shit Locus EQ. Um, I am, as I get older, I find I'm getting a little more sensitive in that two kilohertz to four kilohertz range, that kind of brightness fatigue range. And the Locus gives me the ability to just do a dB or a half a dB cut at 2K and half a dB cut here and maybe a half a dB boost over there and kind of smooth things out. Now, I don't use it when I'm reviewing, only when I'm listening for pleasure. So that's really been nice. And again, there's nothing new about it. I've had a million EQs in the past, but that one is kind of one I rely on a lot. So that would be that particular accessory. So anyway, I hope you had some fun with this. I did. I certainly did. And I would love to get your comments or ask me a question that I maybe I didn't think of that you did. And I'll be happy to answer it in the comments. Of course I would. And everybody knows who, the, anybody who comments knows I respond to the comments for sure. I love that communication that we have. And I would also love it if you could give me a like and a subscribe. And again, if you wanted to support the channel, there's a membership link in the pinned comment and in the video description. There are some affiliate links in the video description itself, and you know how those work. And also too, there's my playlist. Now I've added some new playlists um, that are playlists of the reference tracks I use when I'm evaluating gear for a review, just to kind of give you some insight into what's going on in the noggin and kind of the music I use and how, and maybe give you the ability to kind of guess how I'm judging and, you know, the tracks I'm using for, you know, to, for bass response and mid-range and so forth and so on. So those playlists are down there. I have asked you guys to send me playlists. A lot of you did, and I'm so grateful. They're in the community post on the main, my main YouTube page. If you look over, you'll see posts or community. Click there and go down a little bit and it says read more and you drop down. And I think there's 25 or so. And if you would like to send me a uh, a playlist. I would really appreciate it. Oftentimes when you send a link, YouTube kicks it into a holding folder. I do check it every day or so. So it will event, if you send it to me, I will get it into the community post playlist. So I'm grateful for that. And please send those, continue to send those. Well, guys, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you listening to my rambling on. Um, as I'm filming this video, we're getting really close to 5,000 subscribers. And I can't tell you how much that means to me. The fact that so many people um, like what I do and get value out of what I do, um, it's rewarding beyond belief. Um, I just can't express how humble I feel about it and how grateful I am for all of your support and all of my subscribers and my channel members. It's been an, a remarkable journey and I love it and it's going to continue and hopefully we'll, we'll get bigger and better and I'm manufacturers are, are, are more willing to send me gear. So hopefully we'll have some fun stuff in there for review that you'll get pleasure out of. But anyway, thank you guys so very much. I can't express my gratitude enough to you. So again, I'm Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. It's now time for you to go listen to some music and maybe ask me a question or figure out some questions you might want to answer. And if you're a creator, make a video with a hi-fi tag in it. Thanks so very much. Have a wonderful day.